Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Blunt Review with Hawaiian Steve. <clears throat> Again today, no blunt, but we got we got Pinky here. Um <clears throat> didn't even honestly have time to roll a blunt. I wanted to get out here and do this shit while it's fresh in my mind. I don't know how many of y'all follow the Mayans, but I just finished season three of the Mayans and shit is crazy. I'm fucking blown away. It's such a phenomenal show. Uh so uh, less said right now, let's get into it, blunt review with Hawaiian Steve, this is the Mayan season 3, let's go, so here it is, I don't know if any of y'all watched Sons of Anarchy back in the day, phenomenal show, <coughs> broke down barriers, created by Kurt Sutter, <coughs> push the fucking limits of what you could do and say and and see on tv uh just a very pivotal show very monumental in breaking down barriers and and pushing the limits and and busting through doors because sons of anarchy did it and they they did it so unapologetically and i gotta really give shouts out to kurt sutter the motherfuckers he's 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 really a fucking genius when it comes to writing and creating these shows he um he created characters that are just always gonna live on you talk to anybody who's watched sons and they all got their own favorite characters it's not all jacks you know some people like opie couldn't stand to see opie go the way he did my personal favorite was juice and of course we all saw what happened to him he got fucked over literally but anyways so, Sons of Anarchy came and went. People loved it. Kurt Sutter tried to drop something new with the uh, Bastard Executioner. It didn't hit too well. Uh, kind of weird. Um, but then, you know, we get a couple years later and we get uh, the Mayans, which was in development. I remember hearing rumors about it a long time ago. Um, the Mayans MC, another motorcycle club in California, uh, mainly Latino, which personally, obviously, I love. Um, and it is continuing in the same fashion as the Suns did with great storytelling and, and really pushing the barriers of, of what you can do on TV. And, you know, just cause it's full of, uh, bad language and bad behavior from a bunch of grizzly motorcycle guys doesn't mean that it's not good television. The way this show is written, these stories are so rich and full of 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 drama and intrigue and uh the way Kurt Sutter designed the show and you know his writing staff and his his whole crew really make this show and this world come to life and uh I just got to say it I I love the way they do it I love I love the stories I love the the characters they are just phenomenal all of them um we are in season 3 we just finished it um, so quick recap, you know, the story, it follows easy Ezekiel Reyes, uh, as he, uh, gets, gets into the, uh, Mayans MC, his brother Angel is already a member. And, uh, what had happened was, uh, he was in jail and got tapped to join the club as an informant. So he does to save him and his brother and his dad, you know, to save his family. He does this. But when he's in, he realizes that it's not that easy. Whole first season, you're dealing with this uh, FBI agent who's trying to run these two brothers and make them do his bidding. And God, he's such a fuck. He's really cool. I like the way he talks. But, he, oh, he's such a fucker. And then you got cartel boss Galindo. Um... This is played by the same dude that was in uh, SVU as Alves, or, or no, not Alves, Amaro, Amaro, Detective Amaro from SVU. He plays Galindo, the uh, cartel, the head of the cartel here in Mexico, running heroin. First couple seasons are, are just, you know, phenomenal. I just, I can't recall everything right now, but, uh, you know, you get all this story um, about Easy's dad and Galindo's mom from back in the day. You find out his his past. Oh, by the way, 
A huge shout out to Edward James Olmos, a fucking legend, a legend in, in cinema, especially uh, in the Latino culture. So Edward James Olmos plays Easy's father, and he does a phenomenal job. I love watching this guy on the screen. He just he's captivating. He steals a scene from any anybody whenever he's whenever he's on the screen. You know, he uh, he blows me away. Just but he always has, always will. If you haven't seen American Me, go check it out. Anyways, so this third season <coughs> pretty much see a war brewing <coughs> amongst within the Mayans and. Um, Shit just gets crazier from there. There's a lot of death, a lot of betrayal, a lot of backstabbing, a lot of this and that. In this season, we find out that uh, Taza, um, one of the, the older guys in the club, is actually um, gay, which is huge. Um, don't know what happened to him at the end of this season because he uh, put a gun on the table as he decided to tell Bishop, the president, all of his you know misdeeds and and whatnot and uh all we hear is a gunshot we don't know what happened at this time though um just outside the club gates is i i don't know what it looks to be the rest of the mayans from all of california at their door ready to go in and fucking kill these guys because of uh all the shit that they've stirred up so when i say it really is edge of the seat excitement you can you cannot they leave you, every episode is a cliffhanger, but God, these season finales fucking kill me, because now I gotta wait a whole year to find out what's gonna happen, but, um, just phenomenal all the way around, uh, the acting in this, in this show, I really, I'm blown away by, they, they, they bring these characters to life so fucking well, it's such a well-written show, well-produced show, uh, my my personal favorite character is Coco, who, um, if you've been following, has had a real rough time. He he went down a pretty dark rabbit hole. Um, in the first season, we find out that he has a daughter who she grew up believing that he was his brother. She was he was her brother, and that her grandma was actually her mom. They find out this isn't true. Some shit goes down, and Coco actually goes and kills his own mother, strangles her in the tub fucking crazy and from his talks with easy we also see that coco is not dumb you know coco has has some deep thoughts going on regarding philosophy and and the philosophy of club life or criminal life the philosophies of within murder um and whatnot he also came from the military he's a sniper and um in this season we we see him going down that that junkie hole, and um, we it's very disturbing to see what comes out on the other side. We have a completely unrecognizable Coco, <coughs> who um, <coughs> actually does OD. <coughs> His daughter comes home and finds him. She's screaming. His junky girlfriend gives him a shot in the leg, and bam, he's he's back. But now he's done. He don't want to do it no more. <coughs> and uh, but he he can't leave this girl, hope alone. So he tries to save her from it too. <coughs> and it uh, it's not an easy road. And I gotta say, them touching on this uh, <coughs> this heroin opioid thing, um. <coughs> <coughs> none of us are blind we all see it it's very bad in this country it's very bad all over the world but uh <coughs> in this country there is a very bad opioid epidemic and um for them to bring that to light and actually bring it to light in the same very similar way that i'm sure a lot of people get hooked uh he he got there there was a shootout he got glass in his eye he had to go to hospital and what do they give you for all that fucking pain for the glass in your eye is opioids, <coughs> Viking and Oxycontin, whatever it is. I don't even know. They give them opioids and then it just goes from there. It just goes from there. You get hooked on them pills and then when you can't get them fucking pills no more, well, you start going to other shit and that's how it goes and that's how it goes with too many people in this country. 
That's why I thought it was really important that they touched on this topic because we can't just play like it don't exist and uh, really makes you see how some of the doctors are the real fucking drug pushers in this country. Politicians, uh, pharmaceutical reps, they're the ones making the rules and and uh, playing the game and making the, the rules as they go, you know? Whatever is legal for them to make money off of you and me and us, that's how they're going to do it. So, you know, fuck those motherfuckers. But anyways, um, another thing that they touched on is in this uh, second to last episode of the season, suicide. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, um, depression and suicide is a very, very deep uh, subject matter to get into. Um, and they didn't, they didn't get too deep, but you could see this shit brewing with the, one of their new prospects all season, you know, real soft guy probably doesn't belong there from the get go. You can tell he, he apologizes way too much for one. Um, he's too soft. He he shouldn't, shouldn't be there. And and you see that right from the get go. And, um, fight breaks out. And he's getting beat the fuck down. And the reason he joined was just for respect. He just wanted respect. He wanted people to look at him the way everybody else looked at them when they had their cuts on. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit, you gotta watch out for them. They'll fuck you up. You better respect them. You know, blah, blah, blah. (coughs) All this guy wanted was respect. But he was too soft. And um, they get into a fight. Uh, with an, with the other Mayans, and he shoots the guy and kills him. And this weighs very heavy on his heart. You can see uh, all the screen time he gets following up after that. He's uh, very, very, very disturbed by this, and so he um, they patch him over. He he makes it into the club, and at his celebration, um, he's quiet. He doesn't say a word to anybody, and then. Uh, I don't know where he just blows his fucking brains out. And, uh, shit's crazy. Shit's just crazy. Nobody knows why. Um, easy has an idea. You know, he's talked to him before, but it really, you felt like you knew something was going to happen. The way the camera was on him, the way he was looking, you knew something wasn't right. But uh, for it to just happen the way it did just kind of caught me off guard. And I was like, oh, shit. And uh, to bring that into a show and, and, you know, deliver, you know, just that kind of story, I think is huge. Um, A lot of people, especially with going through what we're going through in this country right now, uh, a lot of people are going through depression. Uh, Not saying it's all because we killed a guy for a motorcycle club, but... You know, depression is different for everyone, but it, it still hurts the same. And so for them to bring in depression and suicide into the show, I thought was uh, just a smart move, um, responsible move on their part. Um, we got to talk about these things, people. We got to talk about these things and uh, it's not going away. But I digress. Getting back to the show. Fucking phenomenal. The season finale just blew me away. You got all the, the other Mayans waiting outside their door. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Easy's girl left him, so he's stuck here. Uh, shit's going to hit the fan in season four. It just sucks that now I got to wait a whole fucking year. <coughs> and uh, I'll give a... <coughs> I'll give a blunt review for the, a blunt rating for the whole three seasons up to now. I'll give you a full fucking blunt. If you have not watched this shit, go home, check it out. It's on Hulu right now. Binge the shit out of this show. It's fucking good. If you, if you like Sons of, Sons of Anarchy and you still haven't seen it, shame on you. Cause you should have by now. Cause if you love Sons, you'll fucking love this show. If you haven't seen Sons yet, go watch Sons and then watch this show. Binge it all. What else are you doing? Right? Go fucking do it. This show's great. Acting's great. Production, writing, everything. Awesome. Go check it out. Full fucking block. All right?